GoPro has been the one to beat in the high-end action camera market for some time now with their Hero 8 Black. But recently, Insta360 entered the 4K market with this, the 1R, a modular designed camera that can be either a 4K wide angle like the GoPro or transform into a 360 degree camera. But which one of these cameras is the one that you should be buying? Let's find out. Okay, so the first thing that an action camera needs to do really well is image quality. And I want to talk about both photos and video image quality. So looking at just the JPEG straight out of camera, they're pretty similar apart from there's a big difference in the white balance. The GoPro is a lot warmer and there's a bit more detail in the images of the 1R. Similarly, the 1R, when you take the raw files and convert them in Lightroom, uh, just looks a little bit better, I think, overall, and just has a little bit more detail, but they're pretty comparable. There's not much in it. Where the 1R really um, is much better than the GoPro is the HDR images, because you have so many more options with the 1R to allow you to get a better image out of it. You can shoot in bracketed exposures of three, five, seven, and nine shots. Whereas the GoPro, you just have one option and I think it probably combines three shots, I'm not sure. But it doesn't um, give you the flexibility of the 1R. And as a result, you find that the 1R um, retains the highlights a lot better. Moving on to video image quality, both of these cameras will shoot up to 4K 60 frames a second. In the case of the GoPro, it will shoot slow motion at 2.7K up to 120 frames a second and 1080p up to 240 frames a second, whereas the 1R will shoot up to 100 frames a second in 2.7K and up to 200 frames a second in 1080p. So there is a clear difference between the two in terms of the slow motion they are able to achieve and you'll see this in the tests I'm about to show you. Okay, so a quick test of the Hero 8 versus the Insta360 1R. I've got both cameras set in pretty much auto everything. Um, the colours are all auto. This is just a walking test. Um, both cameras are in 4K24. I'm backlit, so apologies for that. I'm just walking in my local park, getting a bit of exercise, lockdown exercise. Um, so yeah, they're both set on um, their best stabilisation, so flow state for the um, Insta and the GoPro has got the um, Boost Hypersmooth 2.0 and Boost on. But to do that, I've got to go into uh, the wide field of view rather than the super view. So um, that's one thing to consider with the GoPro as you change modes you have limited options so once you go into certain 4k modes for example and then slow motion modes you don't get that boost option so if you go into 4k 60 for example you don't have boost you just have hyper smooth so okay so this is a backlit test what's the dynamic range like what's the image quality like how do they both do in that situation? So with the 2.7K footage, you notice that the 1R crops in significantly on its wide lens in this frame rate and resolution, whereas the GoPro is significantly wider because it retains the same crop as its normal wide lens. It's also 120 frames a second compared with the 1R's 100 frames a second. So it's a clear win for the GoPro when it comes to 2.7K slow motion footage so uh, let's try running in slow motion. I think it's clear that the GoPro is also the winner when it comes to the really high frame rate footage. There's not much difference in image quality, but overall the GoPro is a little bit better, a little bit sharper, and also it's shooting at a higher frame rate overall, and it does make a big difference. So as you'll have seen there, the crop on the 2.7K on the wide lens of the 1R is quite significant and it's something I didn't realise happened until I did those tests. This brings us on to another important 
part of image quality for these action cameras, which is the field of view and the versatility of that field of view. One reason why the GoPro has always outdone its competition, such as the Osmo Action, is that the GoPro provides a really wide field of view. SuperView gives you that really immersive feel for things like mountain biking, whereas the wide, linear and narrow lenses provide for anything from action sports to vlogging. The 1R provides similar versatility, giving you narrow, linear, wide, ultra-wide, and now ultra-wide plus, which has just been introduced with its latest firmware update, which is meant to replicate the SuperView look. And it does this to a degree, but as you'll see from my tests, it actually squeezes the image in the center of the image, making it look slightly distorted and odd compared to the super view of the GoPro where it seems to squeeze it at the edge of the image. So I'd say the GoPro looks better overall for image quality at any frame rate. Now one thing that both these cameras do exceptionally well is stabilization. This is a walking test to see what the stabilization is like. This is the best that both cameras can give us. And now this is a running test. I'm not trying to hold them particularly steady. Okay, so hopefully that was a good first comparison. Okay, go into super view now and put on just the hyper smooth 2.0. Okay, so walking into the sunshine now, so see how both cameras deal with the light changing. Um, I've put the GoPro into super view now, which means we've lost hyper smooth boost. And we've just got HyperSmooth 2.0 standard. And we will see what the difference is, if there's much difference at all. And um, obviously with the Insta360, you can choose your field of view later. You don't have to set it and have it baked into the image in camera. You can set it if you open it up in the 360 Studio later on you can change the field of view to ultra wide or wide or narrow, whatever you want. That's quite nice, although it does involve an extra step in the editing process and the workflow. So I'm just gonna go for a run again and we'll see what it looks like. Now I'd say there's little to choose between these two in terms of stabilization. I think they both look really good and these cameras have got so good now that you don't really need a gimbal. I think again the GoPro is probably just slightly better on slow motion whereas um, at 24 frames a second I think the Insta360 actually looks pretty much as good as the Hypersmooth. Audio test 1, 2, 3. This is the GoPro Hero 8 versus the 4K mod of the Insta360 1R. And I'm just on my bike and we'll do a quick test going along, see how fast we can go, see what the stabilization's like. This is with wind reduction set to fast action and set to auto on the GoPro. I'm talking in normal voice, not shouting. Let's see how loud it is or quiet. All right, so we're recording on both cameras now. Let's see what that looks like, sounds like. So we've got the GoPro is with wind reduction on and the 1R has got the wind reduction on for fast paced action. So let's see what that's like on a dual mount side by side into the wind. the 
GoPro set to auto just here and I've got the 1R set to voice boost daily so this should now be quite a good comparison between the two to find out what the audio quality is like and on the video I will flick between the two to show you what the audio quality is like between the two cameras now that we have an updated firmware on the 1R. So I've done a couple of other videos on the 1R and the audio issues I've been having with this camera and you can see those linked up in the card above and also in the description below. Check those out if you want more in-depth reviews of the audio quality of this camera, both with the internal microphones and also with the external mic adapter. From those tests, I'll let you make your own minds up, but to my ear, um, I think the GoPro has far superior sound quality straight out of camera. It should be said that the recent firmware update for the 1R has improved the sound quality and it's got it a lot closer to the GoPro So one thing that's important with any camera, but particularly action cameras, is the ease of use. And the GoPro does a fantastic job of making it really simple to use and really intuitive. The touchscreen is a really good size. It's much better than older versions of the GoPros. And they've done away with the cage that you used to have to put this in. Whereas the Insta360, you have to put this in a cage to give it structural stability. And it's very similar to the old GoPro kind of housings where you have the bit of the back that tightens up with the top mount. And it's fine, but it basically adds a significant extra layer of faff to setting up this camera because you don't generally get to use it like that. There's no mounting bracket, there's no tripod mount, there's nothing on the bottom there. Now they are bringing out a larger battery for this, which will include um, some little feet similar to the GoPros um, on the bottom there. And um, that will be a welcomed addition, but ultimately I've found that using it in this little housing is just a complete pain because to access this port door, it's really difficult once it's in this housing and you end up just having all kinds of issues with it. And what happens with this port, this little door here, where you put the micro SD card, it actually um, is just an awful design. And the, the little cable that it's attached to gets twisted up and it's really hard to get back in when it's in its, um, when it's in its housing. Whereas GoPro have really refined the design of their camera. So the port door is really easy to open. You can take it off really easily. You can pop it back on really easily. And it, now you can easily take out the battery and the SD card without having to fiddle around, taking it out of a frame or um, just spend extra time basically trying to use the camera whereas with this when it's in the frame if you want to change out that battery which you're going to need to do you have to take it out of the frame first and it's just all time and effort that you don't want to have to put in when you're out the other thing that they have tried to improve with the latest firmware update is the speed at which the camera boots up but as you can see when compared to the gopro it's still significantly slower and that could be the difference between you getting the shot and missing the shot. And then coming on to the just overall usability of the camera in terms of the touchscreen and user interface, the GoPro just does everything brilliantly. You have shortcut buttons that allow you to customise your screen in any mode. It allows you to change all the settings really easily with one tap, whereas on the 1R screen, because you've got only half the real estate and they've tried to cram on the same amount of features it it makes it quite difficult to navigate I find you end up swiping the wrong thing sometimes and also that it just takes longer to change settings on the camera whereas the GoPro you can set up your custom settings 
and then save them as, for example, snow or bike or travel or vlog. It just makes it much easier. Both of these cameras offer voice control, but again, I would say the GoPro has really refined this over the last few years and it just works much better. Start recording. GoPro, start recording. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, take a photo. Take a photo. Start recording. Insta360, start recording. So both of these cameras advertise themselves as durable, but they both have shortcomings. They both are waterproof without a case down to five meters in the case of the 1R and 10 meters in the case of the GoPro. But the biggest issue with the GoPro is that the front element here used to be replaceable. You used to be able to take it off and on, but it's no longer replaceable. So on the Hero 8, if you scratch this front element, that's it, you're done. You need to either send it into GoPro to be repaired if that's a possibility at extra cost or you need to take out their insurance plan, which costs extra and really isn't something you should be having to pay extra for when you're buying a durable action camera. The 1R isn't without its issues as well. The main one for me is that because this is a modular design, dirt and dust and water can potentially get in underneath where the battery is and in between the different modules. And this is something that I've experienced already using the camera. And you do have to basically clean it a lot more regularly and take much better care of it than the GoPro. Um, I've used this GoPro for mountain biking in really muddy conditions and it got absolutely covered in mud, but I just dunked it in a load of water. Whereas with the 1R, if you were to do the same thing, um, you're going to end up with mud under here in all these kind of little crevices and it's going to be a lot more difficult to um, keep clean and it worries me that the durability of this camera just isn't going to be as good in the long term. Both of these cameras have their pros and cons but if you're just looking for a 4k wide angle action camera the GoPro is still the one to beat and it's the one I would choose to buy. However if you are looking for a 4k action camera and a 360 camera all in one the 1R is pretty compelling because it is getting better all the time the latest firmware update has made a massive difference and it's made it so much closer as a comparison in terms of the 4k wide angle mod to the GoPro their 360 camera is a really good camera as well meaning that you're going to get the best of both worlds for less than you would pay for example buying the GoPro Hero 8 and the GoPro Max. Okay guys, so that's just about gonna do it from me today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do click the like button and also consider subscribing to the channel. If you do have any comments or questions, please leave them down below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. And until next time, I hope you all stay safe and well. See you in the next one.